Okay, we're back. We're live. It's the one o'clock rock. Okay, and we have an old friend, uh, Tatiana Cerullo, and she was uh, one of our early hosts back back in the day. I want to say it has to be eight eight years ago. Seven. About seven. Years seven years ago. ago. Yep. It, it seems like eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in earlier iterations of our studio, then she came around and she went out in the field with me. We took pictures. We made shows. Videos. Yeah. Videos. We, it was the beginning of ThinkTech uh, in its present form. And now she's back. She's done a lot of things in the meantime. And we're going to catch up with Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, Jay. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. And you're a lawyer, um, but you're a lawyer who is, what do I call it, a creative, innovative, flexible, mm, a, a lawyer of the world, Renaissance <laughs> lawyer, okay? <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the law side first. Right. Okay. Well, I originally went into law to practice environmental law. I wanted to contribute something to saving the environment. And I had practiced environmental law in, in different areas. And my path just kind of started winding around. And right now, my practice is maritime law and corporate law, mostly in the Marshall Islands. <laughs> Does that mean you spend a lot of time in the Marshall Islands? I don't. I can practice remotely. Uh -huh. And I, I just have to go to hearings at the court there once or twice a year. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. And you have a partner in this? I do. I have a co-counsel who's um, been practicing in the Marshall Islands for about 30 years. And oh. he's sort of a mentor to me. What's his name? David Lau. Mm. Name of your firm then? You have a firm name? Marshall Islands Lawyers. There's not many of those, are there? I kept it easy so that when you search Marshall Islands Lawyers, I'm the first one on a Google yeah. search. <laughs> and altogether there's one, right? Altogether there's one. 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 One firm. One firm. Doing Marshall Islands Law? No? I'm exactly. Only joking. Yeah. <laughs> are you the only one? Yeah. No, no, no. There's, there's a handful of others. A handful, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's, that's different than uh, U.S. law or Hawaii law, isn't it? It is different, except that the Marshall Islands has modeled their constitution, their laws of civil procedure um, on U.S. law, and they also use U.S. law as precedent. Mm -hmm. so. I remember you were into that when you were doing host with us seven years ago. Yeah. So this has been a long-term avocation I've for you. I've been developing. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, it's a public service, among other things. Yeah. So, but this all evolved into something else. And right. that's what we're here <laughs> to talk about primarily. Can we talk about sunscreen lotion, please? Yes, exactly. So I wasn't getting that environmental um, impact that I wanted to have in my law. And I saw a need for a natural sunscreen that was actually really effective and performed well because one of my big hobbies several, several years ago was triathlon. And I'd be out in the sun for hours and hours of training, and I just didn't like the sunscreens that were on the market. I wanted nothing to do with chemical sunscreens back then because already I felt like they were toxic, they sting your eyes, and they didn't really work either. I'd still get burned. Um, so I switched to natural sunscreens. But, but, but it, you have to have sunscreen if you're going to do uh, training for triathlons. You, right. Uh, you'll fry if you don't do that. Absolutely. Uh, especially on the Big Island. Were you training on the Big Island or here in Oahu? I, I did the half Ironman on the Big Island, and so I did some training there. I also did Xterra on Maui. But most of my training was here. I remember I did a half, a half triathlon. What do you call an Ironman? Uh-huh. A Tin Man. Tin a man. Tin man. Tin man. That's like a sprint. Yeah. <laughs> I know. They're great, too, It's though. below your station, I know. But for me, it was just fine. Oh, that, I mean, it's awesome. And I remember the amount of time you spend in the sun, especially if it's a hot day. You know, they start early, but then you work your way into, you know, the sun being overhead, and you still have to go, 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 and you're, you're testing every system, and it's hot, and you're burning, and if you don't have suntan on you, suntan lotion, you're in trouble. You yeah. really need that. Absolutely, and you can't really reapply so often when you're just when your body's moving and you're out there, you're not carrying your sunscreen with you. So yeah. I, 
I really wanted a natural sunscreen that actually stayed on through sweat and also ocean swells and that didn't feel greasy and sticky and that also didn't just slide right off as soon as I started sweating or jumped in the ocean. So you relied, you immediately went back to the, um, the biochemical part of your law school training. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you could figure out how to make a sunscreen that would meet those specs. Tell us how you made a sunscreen that would meet those specs. All right, so I met my now husband and he had sailed around the world and I met him in Hawaii and he was telling me how... So we got triathlons, we got sailing around the world, we got environmental in general. You've been around actually, Tatiana. I have, I have. <laughs> um, so he was also unhappy with chemical sunscreens and I turned him on to natural ones. Um, and the reason why he was so interested is because he was constantly getting burned. When you're on a sailboat or on the water, sure. you're getting the reflection the of water. the sun yeah. from the fiberglass too and ah, the water, ah, and yeah. it's intense. Yeah. So he was always burned, he, and his eyes were always stinging from the chemical sunscreens. And then when I showed him the natural ones, he said, well, th this feels better, but it's so sticky and greasy. And, and I, you know, I said, I know. And was so it we, made with alloy? Um, well, it's zinc. And yeah. oil. The like natural. It, the natural ones back then were all zinc in oil. Okay. And it's that's greasy. So mm -hmm. um, we thought, well, let's mix up some at home and just see, you know, what we could do for fun. And as an attorney, I thought, well, let's see. Let me look into this deeper. I want to see if there's any um, law about sunscreens. And I discovered at that time that I hadn't sold any yet. We were just playing around with it. But it turns out that sunscreen is classified as an over-the-counter drug, like Tylenol or Advil, mm -hmm. you know, anything you can just pick Meaning up at the, the drugstore. the FDA has to approve it. Right, so sunscreen has all these FDA regulations. So once we decided, hey, let's do this, we need a sunscreen that we both want to love and that works for our lifestyle, we started down that journey. And that was about five years ago. <laughs> well, less than seven. Less than seven, right. <laughs> it took a while. So what, what, kind, what kind of formula did you come up with? So with the professional formulator. So we decided, okay, forget trying to do this ourselves because that's not legal and it's not sustainable. Can't sell it anyway. And we, yeah, so we did a lot of research and through some family friends we discovered, okay, you can go to manufacturing facilities and, and work with the formulators to develop your formula that you, that you want. On and the mainland, you US, them, US, US, US mainland. Okay. And we told them what we don't want and then a little bit of what we do want. But what one of our criteria is that we had to have Hawaiian ingredients. We wanted the nutrient-rich, antioxidant-dense uh, anti uh, ingredients that grow right here in Hawaii because we also wanted to support local farms and businesses and make it truly a Hawaii product. Yeah. So we had our seven ingredients that we picked out. And can, I, can I read them off? Yeah, absolutely. It's not confidential or anything? No, it's on our label. <laughs> on the label. Okay. Uh, oh, where am I reading from? So Kona Red. Kona Red, Hawaiian coffee, coffee fruit? Yes. Coffee fruit? This is not uh, edible, though. It, no, you, it wouldn't kill you, but no, you don't want to put it on your ice cream. <laughs> okay, it's an extract, coffee fruit extract. Yes. Um, noni, uh, spirulina. That's from Nutrex. They got plumer, plumeria. Plumeria the flower, extract, yeah. yes. Okay. This is very natural, very local. Honey? honey? No, it's noni honey. Noni honey. Yeah. Okay, what's noni honey? It's the honey that is made from the bees that... Natural. get their um, pollen and their okay. ingredients. Macadamia, in you went really local here. Cocoa nut oil, mm -hmm. that's really natural, that's really local, mm -hmm. yeah. It's agricultural already. <laughs> okay, so you say to the guy, we need these seven special local Hawaii ingredients. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we, we need to get uh, something that won't rub off so easily and that will give us real protection. Right, right. And, and we wanted it to feel so good because one of our um, goals was to make more of an impact by creating a natural sunscreen that actually felt really good so that people would want to switch. How does, how does a natural sunscreen feel good? What, what kind of feel, if you can articulate this, what kind of feeling do you get? Well, you want it to rub in almost clear. Mm -hmm. Ours rubs in clear as long as you're not squeezing like, you know, the whole thing onto your arm. Mm -hmm. But if you put the right amount, you can rub it in clear. Mm -hmm. When you go like this, it's not sticky and then it doesn't feel greasy. So it, this goes on like a moisturizing lotion. And, and your skin absorbs it. Your skin absorbs all the oils and antioxidants in there. There's actually 23 antioxidants. Seven of them are Hawaiian. So it's very enriching for your skin, nourishing, and it helps prevent DNA damage from the sun. So it's good for your skin as well as protecting your skin. Exactly. I get from that. Yeah, okay. All right. So you, you tried a couple of these manufacturing facilities on the mainland. Were they all perfectly successful? Absolutely not. <laughs> there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. The first one just didn't work out. They kept on trying to push chemicals that we didn't want to be in there. They said, well, we can't quite do that unless we use you know, this and that and the other thing. And so we said, okay, we're going to have to thank you so much for your time, but this isn't going to work. We have to go seek out another formulator and facility. So we found another one and we went through another couple years. Um, we just couldn't get the performance we wanted and we just didn't want to settle. We, we didn't start this just to settle on any old formula. We wanted it to be the best sunscreen ever, like revolutionary. <laughs> that something that we actually love and want to put on our skin every day. So we worked with them and we just were not getting what we wanted and they said well you know you have such stiff criteria and you're so picky and oh, sorry about that and then kind of at the last minute before we decided to say goodbye they said try this formula so we tried it and we thought well you know what that's actually not so bad let's let's move forward with that one and we went through all kinds of FDA testing. They mixed up a whole pilot batch and the whole thing, and then it didn't pass one of the FDA tests. <laughs> oh, no. So we lost a big chunk of cash doing that. Oh, and so no. this is several years in. The joy of entrepreneurship. And we just kept going. And then we went to another, well, actually after that we decided to go to a private lab that's using cutting edge ingredients, not just from the manufacturer because a lot of labs in the manufacturers will just have what's in their pantry, like a baker it, who's just baking from the ingredients that are there and not going to the store to actually buy something to do mm -hmm. something different. So that's kind of a, what a lot of manufacturers do. They just want to use what they already have, mm -hmm. mix it up, and here you go. Say so, manufacturer, you mean people who manufacture suntan lotion? Like contract manufacturing Of suntan lotion. It's cosmetics and cosmetics then if, they, and okay. if they have a drug license to manufacture over-the-counter drugs like sunscreen, then they can also mm -hmm. manufacture sunscreen. Yeah, so um, just a, a footnote to all of this. Now, at the time, this, this bill that was passed and signed and into law this year, right. 2018, just a couple months ago, yeah. okay, was not was not in existence. It was not on our radar. Nobody, uh, nobody was thinking along this line. No, but we actually were already aware of some of the preliminary studies that had been done in Europe. Like there was one study, I think, in 2008 in Italy about how sunscreen they thought was affecting coral. So we were aware of the toxicity of chemical sunscreens, but we didn't know that it would actually be a law in Hawaii one day when we started this process. You know, so when thing. did you factor, if at all, I mean, sounds like the kind of product you were looking to create would not, w w was, was not going to be damaging to the reef life anyway, right? right? Right. And that was a fundamental point in your specs way back when. Right. <laughs> and so you didn't do it because this bill 
existed no. or because you thought this bill would exist. You did it because that was your standard of environmental safety. Exactly. Yeah. You hit it on the nail. <laughs> okay. Well, tell me how you ultimately got to the the recipe that works. Right, so we ended up going to an independent lab where you have to pay an arm and a leg for a formula. And then even with this per, um, very experienced professional formulator, it took another year and, and some months to finally arrive at this formula. And this particular formula is like mag a magician because zinc oxide is like working with clay. It is powdery and thick. When you just put oil in it, you see it's like almost like white mud. <laughs> so we feel that he did something amazing here with our formula, of course with our guidance, but um, he well, eventually gave us the formula. Okay, we're going to take a short break. During the break, I hope you don't mind, Tatiana. I'm going to open it up and put some on. Yeah. I'll give you my honest reaction right after this break. Whoa, okay. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us and stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Okay, we're doing suntan, uh, reef safe suntan Sunscreen. lotion today. Yeah. Sunscreen today <laughs> with Tatiana Cerullo, who is a former host of ours comes back as a guest and tells us what she's been doing for the last seven years. <laughs> and it's this. It's this. And this is called mm, Cocoa Sun Care. Huh? Yeah. Okay? And I said I was going to put it on during the break, but I thought I'd wait. So I'm putting it on now. Yeah. It's going to feel good, right? It's going to feel really good. And, and there's zinc, zinc in there. Circular motions, and then it'll just kind of soak in. It's disappearing, Tatiana. It's going away. I don't see it anymore. That's the idea. It's my, my skin is absorbing it. <laughs> and it's not sticky. It's not gooey. Yeah. It's being absorbed. It smells, it smells very nice. It oh. smells natural. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no chemical fragrances or phthalates. That's something people look out for or don't want to have. Um, the scent is just a natural vanilla coconut, mm -hmm. just from plant extracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can hardly tell it's on there. I see a little shine, but not much. Yeah, and that'll soak in. And that'll, yeah, and it'll stay seconds. on there for, what? So we have been tested, FDA tested, and confirmed 80 minutes water resistance. But um, we get reports of longer water resistance from our athletes and triathletes. We were the official sunscreen sponsor of the North Shore Swim Series. We were out there every other weekend on the North Shore giving out free sunscreen to all the swimmers to make sure that they were reef safe events and to get them um, comfortable with using something different than the chemicals and that, you know, So they all works. used it. <laughs> right. What kind of feedback did you get? Excellent. And we're so grateful that they welcomed us into the community because we just have gotten wonderful feedback. Well, it's something to ride a bike, you know, or to run, do a, you know, at least two legs of the Iron Man. But when you swim, it's different because you, you're you're in salt water. Right. The salt is corrosive, kind of thing, and it'll 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 deteriorate any chemical coating at all, uh, any suntan lotion at mm -hmm. all. But it doesn't for this. It no, stays on. it stays on. You'll see the water beating up on on your skin. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty terrific. Mm -hmm. So what what is it? What did you say it was? 80 minutes. 80 minutes, but that's only because the FDA will 
they will only allow you to claim up to 80 minutes water oh, resistance, okay. either 40 or 80. But it could be more, in and, fact. And in fact, it seems that way, but legally we are not allowed to claim more than 80 okay, minutes. Okay, well, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> so don't. we're not. He's not claiming more than 80 minutes. Okay, and then uh, SPF 50. Right, and that's actually the highest SPF that you can possibly get. Any more than that is illegal. You're not, because it's misleading. Um, 50 is basically where you want to okay. be, or thir 30 to 50. Now, I, and I read the list of those seven special ingredients. You've stuck to that. You've insisted on that. Right. So there's no oxy, what is it called? There is no oxybenzone and no... Zero. zero oh, zero, yeah. So this has no deleterious effect on reef life at all? No, or marine life. Um, and no octanoxate. That's the other one that's been banned by the state of Hawaii. Okay. And it also doesn't have any other chemical ingredients that are toxic to marine life. And when we talk about what reef safe really means, there are many other chemicals that have been as documented and established by science to, to be marine toxic. And we don't have any of None those. None of them are in here. This is all natural. 30 plus ingredients. We don't have that's any of them. That's pretty good. Right. So, okay, so now you have, you have the product, you have the labeling. I'm sure that that's important. You know, you want it to be appealing to everybody. This yeah. is very appealing. I, I like the feel of it. <laughs> Thank um, you. And um, th there you are, you and your co-founder sitting there with all this stuff. What do you do with it? You got to get it out. <laughs> yeah. You have to actually get people to buy it off a shelf somewhere. Right. How do you do that? So we definitely wanted to reach out to our personal network first and then help build our true fans. And we wanted to do that by going into the athletic community and going into the sailing community and tour boats and, and, um, and then some local natural food stores. So we started just um, on our personal, with our personal network and then we just started going to stores and just reaching out to people just like that. <laughs> so how would you like to buy a case of, of um, Kokua Sun Care? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. that, well, that's, that's really incredible. And now you're in, you're in a number of stores. I wrote this down. You're, you're on Amazon. I can buy this on Amazon? Amazon U.S. and Canada. <laughs> well, two big yeah. markets, yeah. And your uh, you Whole Foods, did you say Whole Foods? Whole Foods next month. Next month, and a ABC store is coming soon? I hope so. And, uh, oh, Down to Earth. Down to Earth. One of Every, my favorite stores, yeah. Yes, it's, it's one of our favorite stores, too, and we are so happy that they brought us in, and we are in every single Down to Earth store. Okay, yeah. and now, now, we get, now we get the most interesting and maybe newsworthy aspect of all of this, so hmm, there's a bill wending its way through the ledge here in 2018 within the last, what, 10 months, nine months, yeah, eight months, whatever, not very long ago, um, which is intended to um, save the reef and it outlaws any of those damaging chemicals. Just those two. Those two. There are other ones that are damaging. Okay, but the bill only, does not address those. Only the two worst offenders that we know of right now have been banned. Ox but there are oxy, others. Oxy. Oxybenzone and yeah. octanoxate. Okay. All right. So they're both now banned by statute. However, this is my favorite part. You know, the, the administration, <laughs> you know, claimed a great success on this bill. And I give them that, although, you know, there are lots of priorities involved. Um, and he signed it in public. Uh, this is Governor Ige. And, and it, was, it, was, it was a few months ago. It was a big deal. And... Um, in fact, the bill does not go into effect for two years more. A year and a half? No. Correct. Two years, two years more. About, yeah. Wait, sometime in 2021. Yeah. January 1st, 2021. Okay, January 1st, 2021. Yeah. Why did it take so long for the effective date? I mean, uh, you know, sometimes in the ledge, you see these, these bills with intentionally defective, uh, uh, effective dates. Um, this one, and, and the, you know, the effective date will be, you know, 2095 or something, and everybody will oh, right. know that that means that it, nobody wants this bill to pass. That didn't happen here. Mm -hmm. It's just two years away. Why is it two years away? Well, I can only speculate. I wish it had gone 
into effect right away. Of course, if you have science that establishes the toxicity of these two chemicals, why not do it now? I still am over the moon excited that it did get passed yep. because it is an incredible first step because yep. it, is, it is an un unprecedented law in the whole world. Um, first time. Hawaii being first the place. first to ban by law chemical sunscreens that for the purpose of preserving marine ecosystems. Did you lobby it? I submitted testimony, our, our company, we submitted testimony, we attended um, a hearing, we went to the rally, and um, we're just sort of always, um, I guess, promoting the awareness of this bill to get other people to submit their testimony and to support it. So now you have a perfect storm. You have you have the bill, it passed. You, you didn't you didn't introduce it, but you supported it, as what I get from that. Right, right. Um, yeah. And you're happy to see that it passed. We all wish it would be effective more more quickly, but there we have. And and you have a product uh, that comports with the bill, that that you know that absolutely compatible with the bill and so you're in great shape. Except the other guys have the chance to sell off their non non conforming products for a couple of years. Right. But you know, in my mind, this gives you a tremendous advantage because now people say, "Hey, the government has finally identified these chemicals as dangerous. So whatever the effective date is, let's let's abide by that decision. Let's buy a sun a sunscreen that that, that you know that is consistent with with that and mm -hmm. which will preserve the environment." So you ought to be in a great shape, in great shape to sell this now and certainly after the after the 2021 um, effective date. Yeah. What's the plan? Can you tell me what you're going to do? Are you going to be Are you going to be able to come down here and talk to me again, or or are you going to be so successful that I can't even find <laughs> you on the phone? <laughs> well, perhaps that you know the latter would be great, but <laughs> but I'll always make time for you. <laughs> um, yeah, we are in a good position. It was completely um, just a, a good timing situation. We were still in development when the bill had been introduced the last couple years before, and we were kind of sitting there like, wow, I wish we had our sunscreen already, but we were you know, still plugging through the formulation to make sure we could get a good one that we loved and then that um, met all the FDA standards. So it just so happened that we were finalizing our product when the law came out. And so what this law did actually is bring so much awareness, like you said. So people are, th are thinking now about it and they're saying, wow, if this has been banned, most people I don't think even know when the effective date is. All they know is they want reef safe <laughs> because it, you know it's the, the trend. And so and, and we have reef safe and it's a Hawaiian product. So we are fitting right into Yeah. Perfect the, timing. Um, you couldn't have planned it better, market. really. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tatiana, compliments on that. Thank you, know, you. you spent your seven years wisely. And I, I also had two children, by the way. That too. <laughs> well, it's somehow all related, isn't it? Yeah. They'll definitely. never have to worry about uh, suntan lotion that hurts them yet. They get sunscreen on their noses and yeah. cheeks every day. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect nothing less. So I'm now going to thank you. I'm going to shake hands with you. And as I shake hands, you will notice that my hand is not oily or greasy <laughs> in any way. And for me, it feels good. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. <laughs>